What's up guys? Barbarian or Bust here today. And we have the Fields of Crimson with the Ring of the Ravenous and the Rage of Harrogath. I wanted to make a Ren Rupture build and this build is actually mainly a Rupture build. Alright, we're gonna let him bleed out. With this build, drag things in, Rupture. That's all you're gonna do right now. And it's absolutely amazing. The Field of Crimson is very important for this, as it gives you your Rupture cooldown. For us to be able to Rupture literally all the time. Pop this guy up here. We haven't really hit Rend yet. There we go, a couple times. Okay, now we gotta move over here to get these guys. But this build is, it's pretty cool. I'm really surprised, but we can almost use Rupture by itself. Infernal Hordes now are absolutely amazing. And the thing you wanna use with this is you wanna make sure that you drag everything to you. So again, drag everything, rupture. Drag everything, rupture. And now the Soul Spire events are not that bad because you have the Steel Grasp. Definitely different play style from Upheaval. This one is still very fun and this is still very fast gameplay. Just use the advantage of the weapon. Which is standing still and giving every getting everything in that blood pool. Stand still and rupture away. Our choices kind of suck here today. Bring him in. Rupture. Dead. Where's the enemies? So if you're going to play Ren, I would suggest definitely getting a Ring of the Ravage. And if you want to play almost mono rupture, you're gonna need a Fields of Crimson. I'm actually quite surprised how the how good the Fields of Crimson is. I don't know if it's best in slot just yet. But I gotta say, I am enjoying using it. I like how it gives you the temper aspects too. And the Rage of Hairgath is always amazing. It got a massive buff. It is best in slot. If you're gonna play Bleed, the one item you need is the Rage of Hairgath. The only thing that kind of sucks about the Fields of Crimson is the Blood Pool does hide the poison on the ground. So sometimes that could get you killed. But besides that, it's awesome. The only time we use Rend is to kill the Aether Masses, really. Bring them all in, Rupture away. And with the Rage of Harrogath and the Field of Crimson, pretty much never run out of ruptures. Which is absolutely amazing. Look at that, that was one red and it absolutely killed the whole thing.
so rapture, rapture, and rupture, rupture again, rupture. Okay, we got a soul spire event. See, we were in a we were in a poison pool right there. We couldn't see it. Yeah, that's the only part about the field of crimson that kind of sucks. You just gotta watch out for poison. Go back over here. Rupture some more guys. You get that ultimate cooldown with Rupture, too, with the Rage of Hairgath. It's so good. Yeah, kind of crappy choices, but oh well. So yeah, very important to stand still and bring things to you. See, look, it kills everything. Go to the next one, open up this guy, and go to this one down here. Boom. So we mainly use Rupture with a side of Rend. But still, Rend is very, very powerful. But I just have this set up for Rupture, because we're just... We're rupturing everything and it pretty much kills everything right away. Now when you're fighting a boss, you're gonna do a more traditional rupture and then rend away. And you wanna stick him with the blood pool the whole time. So we're a little light on fury. That guy's dead completely. Important to keep them in the blood pool as you will do more damage. He's dead. And, and so you want to stick him with a rupture first and then rend as much as you can and you're gonna have to put a couple of flays in there. These guys moving around does kind of suck and you can't stun them. So that makes this a little worse. Th this boss fight. And you can't drag them in with... Uh, with, with your... Steel Grasp, which also kind of sucks. Where's the third one? See, when he moves out of the way, that kind of sucks. There you go, he's dead. So that's Ren Rupture, and while we're here, let's go over the rewards. You can only get this once. So as you see, we could get it twice. After that, it disappears and it doesn't go back. Now, the spoils of materials, I think, honestly, I think it sucks. I'll, let's open it and I'll show you. I mean, I don't know. A lot of those things you can get in the world quite easy. Th this is my favorite one. So I would always go for the middle and then for the equipment and then of course use the rest on the gold. So let's go over Ren Rupture really quickly. 
Now this is not the finished version as we're not level 100 yet. I was trying out Fortress, but the Iron Blood aspect or even the aspect of Might is much better than this. So we are going to be switching this out. And I do have a piece that has Fury per second. I think that is needed if you're going to do Rend more than Rupture. Rage of Hergath, extremely important piece. This, I got really lucky. This is the first one I had with max damage reduction with a greater affix and max unique power with a 60%. So this is huge. And again, not perfect gloves. I wanted damage while berserking and steel grasp. Ranks to core skill, that's great. You could do ranks to rend. And you'd want attack speed and critical strength strike chance. These are pants that I just found. I haven't found anything better yet, but you would want another resistance instead of thorns. And we are using undying. And in the boots, we are using weapon master. And I don't want ranks to concussion. I would want steel grasp stuns. And the weapons, I have accelerating on for our rend. And we, you want strength, max life, and instead of damage over time, you want critical strike damage. And here I have damage while berserking and rend size. On here we have the creeping death aspect with damage while berserking and rend size with strength, max life, and you could go damage. But again, you want the critical strike damage to scale your gushing wounds. And then we have the wanton's rupture. Because we are using rupture so much, you could put this on your two-hander and put accelerating on the one-hander. On all of your weapons, you want strength, max life, and critical strike damage. Not damage over time, not straight damage. And the Fields of Crimson, I'm very surprised how good this is. Not a perfectly rolled one, unlike my lovely Hellhammer. But the big things with this weapon is you're going to want Rupture cooldown to be as high as possible. That 18% does suck, but with a max Rupture cooldown, with a max Rage of Hergath, you can Rupture all day. And as you saw in the gameplay, I pretty much did Rupture the whole time, and not once did it go down, except for when we were doing the bosses and they were, they were moving around and the Rupture would miss. Other than that, this weapon is surprisingly really good. The Ring of the Ravenous. This had such an amazing facelift that this this ring is, if you're ever going to play Rend, this ring is mandatory. And the two things that you want to look for the most are the max ranks to Rend and max Rend's duration. Right now, this ring is better than the max one I had for Season 4. And here we have the Umbral aspect, and I use this for the Steel Grasp. So we Steel Grasp in enemies, and it gives us max resource to be able to rend as much as possible. And instead of Poison Res, we would like this to have Critical Strike Chance. So a perfect ring would be Critical Strike Chance, Attack Speed, and for Rupture, you'd also want Max Strength. And here we use the Iron Warrior aspect, and this is actually pretty decently rolled. Unfortunately, our temper has damage with Wrath of Berserker, which is awful because we are not using that. You would want either War Cry damage or Berserking damage. Strength, attack speed, critical strike chance. This amulet is a great all around amulet, but you're really looking for something with cut to the bone. Our weapon expertise is two handed axe. And let's go over the skills. We have three ranks in Flay for Battle Flay. They take 15x bleeding damage for the next three seconds. That's really well and also this is another way to make enemies vulnerable we have 10 ranks in rend which is absolutely amazing our rend is super powerful and we take violent rend and surprisingly we don't use rend a lot right now we use it more for bossing but rupture takes care of most things but this is still amazing for clearing everything as we saw with the ether masses one rend wiped the whole thing out and we use endless fury so that because we do need to use flay and rend so we make sure that we can only need to flay once or twice so we can rend more often then here we take three points in Posing Presence, three points into Martial Vigor, three points into Iron Skin for Tactical Iron Skin, three points into Swiftness, three points to Aggressive Resistance, three points into Booming Voice, and here we take Warcry over Wrath of the Berserker because Warcry has a shorter cooldown and because of a Ring of the Ravenous we get two more points into Warcry. So with that, we get a decent size bonus. We do take Power Warcry. And this is one of the two ways that we have Berserking. Then we take three points into Pit Fighter, three points into Slaying Strike. And we do have two points here from our weapon. If you find that your enemies are not being vulnerable, put one point in here. Then we take three points into Rupture for Warrior's Rupture. Warrior's Rupture is massive. That's a wicked attack speed bonus. And this is why we want to stack our strength. The more we stack our strength, the more Rupture bleeds 
bleeds everything, which is another reason why the Wanton's Rupture, if you're going to play more of a Rupture style of bleed, needs to be on the two-hander instead of accelerating. But if you're going to play Rend, then keep it as I have it with accelerating on the two-hander. One point to Hamstring to get three points to Cut to the Bone. Very important to get more ranks of Cut to the Bone, as Cut to the Bone will increase your damage significantly. Three ranks into Steel Grasp for Fighter Steel Grasp. This is our second way of Berserking. Our third is our Blood Rage node. We take three ranks into Heavy Handed. I have one rank into Tempered Fury for three ranks to Invigorating Fury. And again, if you are using Rupture more than Rend, take these four points out. You could put some into No Mercy, maybe one into Exposed Vulnerability, or a couple into Guttural Yell. So there's, those are a couple options. And our passive is Gushing Wounds. Gushing Wounds is still good, it just isn't as good as Season 4. And to make sure Gushing Wounds does proc all the time, you want your Critical Strike Chance as high as possible. So ideally, you want Critical Strike Chance on both Rings, Amulet, and your Gauntlets. This already has Critical Strike Chance here, so with these all having Critical Strike Chance, this should be up to 60 to 70% once you have things masterworked. And our Paragon board is not complete, but our first board is Weapon Master. And you can take this out once you have a Rage of Harrogath. The Rage of Harrogath makes sure that you have things cool down quickly. If you don't have Rage of Harrogath yet, Weapon Master is very, very important. Our second board is Hemorrhage, and as you see, we are one point away from maxing out our Hemorrhage node. And we have Territorial. Our third board is Carnage. I do plan on taking the Carnage node. And we have Might. Our fourth board is Warbringer, where we have Exploit. Exploit will only need to have the minimum amount of dexterity in it because once this gets to level 21, this will be over max. So we can take out some vulnerable damage and put in some more critical strike damage. Our fifth board is Blood Rage with Ire, and once this gets level 21, this should be 30. And our final board is going to be Decimator, but we are going to rotate the board so we're going to come down and we're going to path down to this side for max life, grab the decimator node, and then put in a glyph here. We don't need to get any vulnerable damage, and technically we don't need this either because we're already maxed out. And that is Red Rupture. Love play and bleed. Love this play style. Looking forward to getting the final version of this all done and try to min-max this build and see how far we can push it. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.